okay, I want to start thinking about inequalities that have absolute values in them. And this actually requires a, a little bit of discussion and really to think back to what absolute value means. Remember that absolute value is a measure of distance, how far you are from something. So what does it mean if I say to you that the absolute value of A, which is some number, is less than B? What does that mean exactly? Well, it means that A in absolute value is pretty small. Right? It's, it's less than b. So graphically, if here is 0, okay, and if here is b, and then therefore negative b would be you know, right over here, if the absolute value of a is less than b, then a would have to live somewhere inside here. You see that? Because all the values in here, positive or negative, have absolute value that are less than b. But once you escape, once you go outside, then the absolute value, no matter where you are, would exceed b. So in fact, if someone gives you an inequality with absolute values of this form, what you have to realize is that you can actually restate that inequality without any absolute values at all. And what would it be? Well, it would look like this. It would just be all the points that are in here. So A would be between B and minus B. And in particular, I'd write minus B less than A, which in turn is less than B. So the cool thing here is that this kind of statement, and inequality looks like that, is identical to this one. And you just make a conversion. Whoop. And this thing, we, we, we know how to solve. We talked about that earlier. So if you see something like this, you can go to here. What if you see something that looks like the opposite? So suppose you see something that looks like this. Um, A, absolute value, is greater than B. What would that mean? That means that the size of A is actually large, right? It's, it's even beyond B. So what would a picture look like? Let's draw a picture for this. If here's 0, if here is B, and then therefore here would be negative b. If the absolute value of a is greater than b, that means that a is far away from 0, right? It's going to be way out here. Or maybe, since we're taking absolute values, way out here. So now a would live in, in this region here. You see that? So in fact, in this case, we would say that a would live way out here or way out here. And so if you see an inequality like this, you could actually convert that to two different inequalities. One inequality that looks like this, which would be what? This would be that A is greater than B. Do You see, that's what this is saying. A is somewhere bigger than B. Or or A is smaller than negative B. So in fact, when you see an inequality that has an absolute value bigger than something, that actually can, can be converted into two different inequalities, something or something else. And so then you have to solve these two inequalities together to find the solution to this. So the moral so far is that if you see an inequality which has absolute value less than something, you convert it to an inequality that looks like this. That thing is trapped between the something and minus the something. If the absolute value of something is bigger than something else, then you have two inequalities to solve. That thing is greater than the something else, or that thing is smaller than negative the something else. And don't memorize this. Think of the little chart. Think what it means for an absolute value to be small. It means it's near zero. Think what it means for an absolute value to be big. It means that it's, it's far away from 0. And then write down the inequalities that would correspond to these things. So this is the idea. Let's take a look at some examples. Let's solve the following. 3x plus 1 is greater than or equal to 7. OK. Well, how would this look? Well, I see an absolute value is bigger than or equal to something. So how do I think? Do I memorize that? No, I'll tell you exactly how I do it. This is just me now. You don't have to do it this way. I actually draw that little picture I just showed you. I say, OK, let's think about that. If the absolute value is bigger than or equal to 7, where does that put me? 
if here is minus 7, and here is 0, and here is 7, I'm living way out here, or way over here. I'm far from 0. So this means, oh, there's two inequalities. There's 3x plus 1 is greater than or equal to 7. That's this wing right here. And there's this wing, which says 3x plus 1 is actually less than or equal to minus 7. So actually, if I were any good, I would have had these wings written the other way. So this wing right here, you see, corresponds to this. And this wing right here corresponds to this. So this one inequality with absolute value turns into two inequalities without absolute value. Just like with equalities, remember? One equality with absolute values get, gave rise to two equals, equals to solve. Same thing here. Well, now we solve these things. I'll bring the plus 1 over to this side as a minus 1. And so I see 3x is greater than or equal to 6. Dividing through by 3, I don't have to switch the signs since 3 is positive. I see x is greater than or equal to 6 over 3, which equals 2. So x is greater than or equal to 2. So we have that. Or, or now we have to solve this one. So I bring the 1 over to this side, and so I see 3x is less than or equal to, becomes a minus 1, so minus 8. And so I see x is less than or equal to minus 8 thirds. I don't have to switch the sign since I'm dividing by a positive 3. So there's the other wing. And so this would be the answer. So it would be x is either greater than or equal to 2, or x is less than or equal to minus 8 thirds. Any one of those would actually give an answer to this that would be true. Namely, if you pick any number that's bigger than or equal to 2, that will make this thing bigger than or equal to 7. If you pick any value of x that's less than or equal to minus 8 thirds, that will produce a value here that's bigger than or equal to 7. Okay? So two answers, and both of them, of course, are inequalities. Let's try one last one together. Suppose I tell you that 6x plus 4 in absolute value is strictly less than 1. What's my thinking here? Well, now I'm saying the absolute value is small. So that means I must be near 0 somehow. So I draw a little thing with 0. I put in minus 1 and then 1. These are the two values, that negative and positive. And since I'm smaller than 1, I must be living in here. So that means I'm setting up an inequality which says minus 1 is less than this thing which in turn is less than 1. Notice how that little sandwich inequality actually captures this little sandwich interval here. And those are all the values that satisfy this. Well, now I just solve this compound multiplex inequality by just, remember, doing whatever I do on one side, I do to the two other sides. I want to get rid of the 4, so I subtract 4 everywhere. Minus 1 minus 4 is minus 5. I keep the inequality exactly as it is, 6x, and this is 0. And then 1 minus 4 is minus 3. I want to now divide through by 6. It's positive, so I don't have to worry about changing the, the inequality symbols. And then I see minus 5 6 strictly less than x, which in turn is strictly less than minus 1 half. And so that's the answer. And what does that mean? It means that if you pick any value for x, that's bigger than minus 5 sixths, yet smaller than minus a half. So any number in between that little interval, though any such number will actually satisfy this and make this true. Whereas if you pick any number outside of that region, this will be false. So the solution to this inequality is actually this inequality. It's this collection of x's. Any x in this region will actually satisfy that. OK, great. So that is some discussion of inequalities with absolute values. And I'll say some more about this up next. I'll see you there.